if you are familiar with Obsidian, you are no doubt familiar with Zolt's Visual Personal Knowledge Management Channel. Zolt is the developer of the Xcali Brain or Xcali Draw plugin for Obsidian. And his whole channel is focused on visualizing your personal knowledge management system. And last year, I commented on one of Zolt's tweets that I had started to build a system that maps my database in LogSeq, but also in Obsidian. And this, the idea here, if I just go down, is to give you that Google Maps type of view where when you scroll through it, it shows you the location, it shows you the photo, and then building in addition to this, it would show you the notes from your personal knowledge management system. Now, I have not worked on this in over a year, but it recently came up uh, in two ways. Firstly, someone who watched my Obsidian versus LogSeq video asked if I could share it. And then a friend of mine recently did the Camino de Santiago, and he did the same routes that I did in 2013 or 2014. And I went back and looked at this mapping system and saw where I had stayed and then where he was in relation to that. So it's twofold. And yeah, I think it's also just nice to show you a little bit behind the scenes, show you some of the things that I've worked on and tinkered on and then haven't really published. And someone actually asked to publish the link uh, this on this thing over a year ago. So yeah, finally getting to it. So if you are an old hat around this channel, you might be wondering what has happened to One Stutching Mind. Well, One Stutching Mind is no longer. I've rebranded the channel and I've published another video that details why I did that. And it's now actually two channels. I've got Combining Minds Personal Knowledge Management and then Combining Minds Tech and Tricks. And the Tech and Tricks channel is more about looking at other tools that have helped me in this journey. And I'm going to try and publish more videos there. And the idea there is to have lower friction content because that's how I started this channel. It was all about just, you know, me recording as if I was recording for a friend. And I found myself really enjoying producing that sort of content again. So I'm going to try and bring that spirit back here. You know, as things became a little bit more polished and I had the courses, I was like, oh, I've got this pressure to make everything perfect. Well, I'm going to dial that back a bit. The approach that I want to go to is just more unrefined, talking to the camera and sharing some of the ideas that I've got with my database. Now, actually, let me zoom in here. There's another thing I keep forgetting to do. The beauty of Obsidian and LogSeq, well, it's very simple. They both work on markdown files. So your Obsidian Vault and your LogSeq database are working on the same files stored on your computer. So that means that you can access the functionality that is available to you in your Obsidian community plugins or actually all the plugins and there are hundreds of plugins and I've done this in-depth video I said there are too many that's a bit harsh maybe but I think it's too many I like to have things all in one you know, not having to have all the plugins to do my workflows and that's why I use Tana and LogSeq as my tools for choice but Obsidian is really great for publishing long-form content and also if you need a cool community plugin and I've spoken there about like why I prefer LogSeq as well. There's a lot more there in terms of how outliners work. So go have a look at that video. This video is not going to go into that in depth at all. But as I say, you can work on both of your databases at the same time. The plugin I have in question is the map view. So your map view can be found over here. So this is the open map view plugin. Let's actually go into settings. So if I go into settings and community plugins, these are all the plugins that I have, which is not very much. And I've actually got something turned off. Anyways, and this is the map view plugin over here. So that's the one you're looking for. And what this does is it enables you to enter a node with coordinates that then display on a map view. So this is all the places that I've been throughout your know, working career and life. And let's have a look at this Camino de Santiago example up here. So I cycled it over period of 10 days, starting in Bilbao and then ending in Santiago de Compostela. And all of these are nodes with a coordinate in them. Okay, so let's start in Bilbao just to show you how this goes. So you'll see here that there's a location and this is using Obsidian's properties, but you don't actually, this was before Obsidian released the properties feature, you could just use YAML to enter your coordinates. And then it's got this hashtag cycling over here. And that hashtag is what, if I go back, that hashtag is what dictates the icon over here. So if I go and look here, I've got another icon, which is hitchhiking. 
And that is places that I've hitchhiked. So I wanted to build this repository, which would help me just like, you know, visualize the world and see all the things that I've done. And yeah, you can go and define these um, icons using font awesome. And that is built into the plugin setting. Okay, I'm jumping around here, but this is actually what I enjoy doing. So let's just jump around. So if I go to my settings here and I go to map view, there's a whole bunch of things that you can configure. And I think one of the most important things to recognize is that you must use the same new node path or it's the same as your LogSeq database if you're using LogSeq. So here's my LogSeq personal OS and any new node that I create here goes into my pages folder in my LogSeq database. So that's important to get these things working together. And the icons are defined right at the bottom here. So I've got these different markers, diving, cycling, hiking, whatever. And then using the font awesome terminology or the font awesome font names or descriptors, and then uh, defining a color as well. So that's where all of those icons come from. Okay, so this is how it looks in Obsidian. And what I wanted to do here is, as I say, build that view that enables me to see the photos. So let's go and have a look at uh, Lali Bella here, for instance. And I have entered these photos in LogSeq. So there I can see on the twin, or on 29th of September, 2017, we went to the Lali Bella churches. And there's a photo of me at the Lali Bella churches. Now I can also do that in LogSeq or see that information in LogSeq. So if I go to LogSeq, this is what I see here. I see that same picture and you'll see here that, that those coordinates are missing. Let me, but if I click there, they are actually hidden in the front matter of that page as well. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks about how to work with this because in the beginning it was doing all funny things and I didn't really like it. So I'm going to get into that now. But that's really how I have built the system. And also, let me just go to um, 2014 Camino de Santiago. So I'm going to shift click there. And I've just scrolled down a bit so that you're not seeing my friend and my faces. But yeah, these are all, I took down some notes. And yeah, it's just a nice way to have remembered this and, and more memorialized it in a digital way. Okay, so that's a little bit of setup and now I can access those notes and see pictures and do everything all in one place and also get the date based information. Now how you set this up is important. If I go back to Obsidian and I go back to my map view, let's have a look at a place that I haven't been that I want to go, which is Brazil. And for some reason, I do not know why the clicking and creating a note is not working here. But if I let's just try here, maybe new note here. It's not working. I do not know why that's not working, but it's actually not a problem because what I just do is I right click it and I say copy geolocation as front matter. And then I can just say control N to open a new node in Obsidian. So you do need to know some of the Obsidian shortcuts to, to work with this seamlessly. And then I can just say Sao Paulo. I probably spelled that wrong. Uh, Sao Paulo. Yeah, I did spell that wrong. So let's go there, Sao Paulo. And I'm just going to paste that over here. And that adds properties in front matter. Now you'll see here, if I go back to my interactive map view, I've got a Sao Paulo, I've got an icon over there. Now, I think I'm just getting into the weeds of everything at once because something that happens is if you've got LogSeq and Obsidian open at the same time when you're doing this, it will also create backup files in LogSeq. And it does this in two places. It does it in the version files folder and it does it in the dot back file folder. So what I've done here is I've got a preset which excludes back and version files and also zooms to that place clearly. Um, bum, bum. And if I refresh this page, I just go back and forward actually will disappear now because it does this all the time. Um, and let's go back. There we go. I've only got that one icon over there now. So it only shows that I've got one location. So that's a little bit annoying. When I started doing this, I just made sure that LogSeq was closed. Now it's fine because I've got this filter. And, and that filter, if I just go and look at what it is, it says not path back and not path version files. 
So that's just excluding those two files or any files that have that folder in their directory name in my log seek database. So that's just a helpful trick to make sure that you don't get all these random little icons jumping up. And yeah, otherwise just keep log seek closed and it should work okay. But let's go to log seek now. And then we go to Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo over there. Okay, I'm just gonna open this up on the right and then the Sao Paulo one on the left just so that we can keep those two things top of mind. Sao Paulo. And you see here that I've got this location with funny, um, yeah, it shows me the, the location properties over there, but it's not actually properties. And the reason for this is just the, the two ways that the files handle things differently. And the third thing I want to do is actually open this file up in the default app, which is VS Code. And there we go. So in VS Code, the way that it shows is it's got um, these three lines which indicate that it's YAML. Let me just zoom in a bit here. And then location, and then the location, and there's those three lines again. Now what I want to do is actually enter those two lines over there, so that if I go back to LogSeq, you'll see that it now disappears, or that location disappears from that page. And that's just a simple trick that I learned to, to hide those. Again, if you have all the different files open, sometimes it will revert back to that, just because of, the, of whichever one's getting priority. But if I just click into that first bullet point there now, you'll see that I get the location. Now, if you were to do this in LogSeq, so let's actually start a new page. So control K, Curitiba, Curitiba, which is just there next to Brazil, uh, sorry, next to Sao Paulo. And let's go to uh, map view and then copy the geolocation as front matter. And if I paste that here, you're going to see something different. Okay, cool. So I've got a lot of confusing things going on there. And the reason for this is if I, it's because log seeks an outliner. So if, if you're familiar with that, you'll, you'll know where I'm going with this. And if I open this page, oh, what am I doing? Open this page with default app. Okay, cool. And then if I just say, okay, I haven't got, okay, so it's not letting me open that yet because the file's not ready. There we go. And then open with default app. And there we go. You see here, these two little dashes, which indicate that those are blocks. So what I want to do, if I were to do it from, um, from LogSeq, is that I want to make sure that I've got that same format over there, and I can do it like that. Okay, so let's go back to Curitiba here, and there we go. And now you'll see that I also will get a Curitiba over there. So that's how the two files are working in unison. Let us, and for some reason it's now showing all of those things, but let's ignore that for now. Maybe I haven't got the system perfectly down. Just do it only in Obsidian. You know, don't keep uh, log C, sorry, VS Code open. So if I go now to Curitiba and I say, maybe I went diving there, so let's say hashtag diving, I will now get this. Well, if I only had the one icon, well, there we go. I get those two fish icons which show that this is a place that I went diving in. So that's just a very quick overview. Let's have a look at some of the things that I've written down just to emphasize them again. I recommend creating pages in Obsidian and having logsy closed so that you don't have to deal with the bullet points and that you don't get those backup files. Although that this filter should help you to remove those additional icons. The font awesome plugin settings, you can go have a look here. I'll include that link in the video description. Uh, you need to make sure that you're using the same folder for your where your pages are created. So making sure that your Obsidian system, whichever plugins you're using, is creating in the same folder as your LogSeq database. And then yeah, the formatting nuances there for adding coordinates. Like some of sometimes they'll appear in funny ways. You could just go into the actual text file and edit it in the back back end if you want to make sure that it's consistent. I think one of the ideas is that you want to give yourself more visual hooks to remember information. For me, this was just an exercise in having fun and I haven't used it much, but it's nice to have it there as a reference. And I sometimes do go back and populate one or two little things that happen, important milestones over the year, or if I went on an important trip or, you know, went diving, etc. That's a nice thing to have. If I actually go to my diving, let's just 
carry on with this little uh, exercise over here. Boom. Uh, diving. Well, I've actually got a dive log. So if I go to dive log book over there. And these are, this is my dive log book all saved in Logseek because when I had a dive log book on paper, I was definitely not adding all my dives. So yeah, I wanted to make sure that I would, would have this as a nice record. And I like going back and looking at some of these dives too. So that's just a quick way that you can get Obsidian and Logseek to play nicely together. It really is nice to be able to use your markdown files and build this repository of knowledge, whichever way you want. And if you're using Zolt's Excalidraw plugin, you can use that, but you also have Obsidian Canvas if you want, and you also got Logseek whiteboard. So there really are all these different ways to get your information to work together. If you want to go more in detail in Logseek, I've got the Logseek Mastery course. Have a look at that. The link is in the description below. Otherwise, I'll see you around for the next video. Let me know what you think about this format. Hopefully, we'll have a few more videos coming out, although I keep saying that, and then, yeah, it takes a little bit of a while to get the gears rolling again. Anyways, have a good day.